going to cut straight to the chase because you know the who the two of us are and you know this guy on our screen welcome mr andrew walker welcome hey. hi guys hello ladies thanks for having me hi everybody well we got a lot to talk about now let's just we're going to cut to the chase because the first and foremost rama drama rama drama <laughs> rama drama yes yay rama drama how excited are you <laughs> i'm pretty excited <laughs> i would be if i could go yeah cammy's <laughs> gonna be there in spirit with us yes i will <clears throat> well i i you know i probably should use this opportunity as well i know it's been there's there has been some talk uh I, I, and I don't know if everybody knows this or not, but I'm right now I'm in Vancouver working. So I, there's still a very pop, pop, well, it's more possible that I won't be able to make it to Rama drama, unfortunately, oh. than, 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 than if I can be there. Um, right now it looks like I'm working until one o'clock on Friday night. Uh, the producers know that uh, there is this event happening in Chicago the next day. So um, the only way I'd be able to make it there is if I make the 1155 red eye from Vancouver to Chicago and I'm there for, you know, for six o'clock or whatever in the morning time for Chicago. But um, so it's still up in the air, unfortunately, but uh, I know that that you guys are in good hands with Paul and Tyler. And, uh, and fortunately Christmas con is right, you know, is, is, uh, not far behind. So, mm -hmm. um, so if, you know, if you don't see me at Roma drama, I'll be at Christmas con for sure with Paul and Tyler, all three of us will be there. So, um, so there is a possibility. <laughs> Pardon me. Well, if my dancing and my singing partner is going to be there, not going to be there, then well, I'm fine. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. We come in pairs. That's the, real, yeah, that's the real uh, motivation here. Cammy's not going to be there. So, I mean, <laughs> your package that's, deal. That's it. No, exa exactly. Whether I make the red eye or not, if Cammy's not there. <laughs> we should have our own private jet now, though, Cammy. Don't you think? I, you know, I, the, yeah, uh, AK, AK, exactly. AK, airlines. AK, I like AK it. Airlines. <laughs> yeah there you go private jet <laughs> all the bodyguards because you know everyone's gonna try to get to you too i know it's <laughs> tough it's, it's been it's been a tough year for for me cammy how about you it's been tough oh you wouldn't After believe how many yeah, parts i've been offered and just been <laughs> hounded oh i know i know <laughs> so speaking of that so tell us what are three things that you would say were the highlight of Rama Drama in June for you? Uh, the quality of time that we get to spend with people. You know, okay. I, I feel like that, uh, you know, as uh, as fun as Christmas Con is, it's just, it's, it's a different thing. You know, it's just a different, I don't want to compare the two because they're just different and there's pros and cons to both. Um, but I think I really enjoyed the one-on-one uh, -on -one time with a lot of the fans and, um, and you know, interacting with them. The, the karaoke night was so much fun, you know, and being able to just sit in the audience with everybody and laugh with everybody and just kind of, you know, be, you know, be uh, kind of integrated with everybody was such a, was such a great experience for me at Roma Drama. And, uh, floor, being in Florida was also not that bad. Florida is nope. a pretty great place to be. Yeah. You know, New Jersey, flying into New Jersey is, uh, it's not, you know, it's nothing to write home about. <laughs> um, maybe if I was staying in New York, you know, but when I, when I go to Christmas con, I, I basically just, yeah, I, I, I stay in New Jersey. I, and then I fly, I'm so close to Montreal and it's, mm -hmm. it's right, you know, at the time of, the holidays when I'm going back to Montreal anyways, meeting my, my, uh, my wife usually comes out with the kids and meets me back in Montreal. So, um, 
so I just go in, do my work and I leave. But Florida was, was great. And uh, next time, you know, I'm hoping to make a little vacation out of it with my, uh, with my family as well. I mean, bring the kids out there and my wife. And I think my wife has more followers on the, in the Hallmark uh, world than I do almost. <laughs> Everyone comes up to me and they're like, is your wife here? Is your wife here? And I'm like, no, it's just little of me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to disappoint <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's two. So what would be your third highlight from the Rama drama in June highlight. in Florida? My third highlight was, of course, of course, Cammy, our duet. Of course. <laughs> well. I saved the, le- the best for last. That was like, the karaoke night was said it was so incredible for them to decide to do that, you know. And then it was so much. Tammy, fun. you asked me a, like it was almost a year before. <laughs> you're like, oh, can we do this? And I think we only found this. Did did we only pick the song a few weeks before even? Or was no, it, we picked the song at the time in October. At the time, yeah, we picked the song at the time, and and I had to, I had said that I would like to hear you sing it. And then Casey said, no, how about the two of you do a duet? And we're like, okay. So yeah, and but you told me that you had listened to it several times. Yeah, so I that, listened to it a few times. So that you could be ready for it. So yeah. That's right. I grew I grew up listening to Lionel Richie. So well, that was Brian Adams, though. Sorry, sorry, Brian. I, I, I thought <laughs> endless love. I thought endless love. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, Brian, Brian, uh, Brian Adams, yeah. No, I grew up listening to Brian Adams the next well. time. <laughs> I know go. endless. I did endless love at uh, the deck, the Hallmark. Uh, oh, you did. Yes, oh, yes, yes, with yes, yes. Jax, of course. With Jax, yes. Oh yeah, I saw a little clip of that. Yeah. Well, we did no Jax. We did. Um, no, you did, did Greece. Greece did, with Jax. Yeah, you did, did Greece with Jax. And I did endless love with somebody else at Deck the Hallmark. The Deck the Hallmark. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. But that's a good one. De- the endless love is a good is a great duet. Yeah, it is. Maybe we should do that one next time. Huh? Yeah, because isn't the next one in Texas <laughs> where Cammy resides? <laughs> that's right. It is. Eh? It's in. It's yeah. in uh, Dallas. Dallas. Yeah, which so I live Cammy about. Has no excuse not to be at that one. I live about two, three hours away from Dallas, so you can bet I'm coming. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we jump too far ahead to Dallas, um, for our listeners. <laughs> oh, right, right. Yeah, Chicago. Bring it back. Let's, bring it Chicago back. Bring it back. Yeah. is this Friday and Saturday. There's going to be um, a gala, Christmas gala. There's going to be um, a brunch in our Christmas jammies. And two screenings. We get to see a fabled holiday and then another viewing of Three Wise Men and a Baby, in which there'll be, an, uh, I think, an interactive Q&A behind the scenes um, with Paul and Tyler, and hopefully Andrew, if things change. Hopefully me, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I don't know. Do you know, are the guys, are they bringing their elf costumes? Is there going to be an opportunity for some family photos in the elf I can't, costumes? I can't, t- I can't tell you this, guys. I can't tell you this. Well... Maybe I can. I, there's going the elf costumes have been purchased. Let me tell you that Ooh, we we yes. all have elf costumes at at on our person at all times. I'm actually I am wearing my elf costume. I'm wearing my elf costume now, right, your persona. right now. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I live I live in it since Three Wise Men. I live in my elf costume now. That's not the wrong color green. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's under my clothes. Uh huh. Like uh-huh. it's like it's like my my Superman. It's my superhero. You know. Yeah. I go to my I go to the phone <laughs> so you're booth. Superman. You got I your go elf costume booth. there. That's it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I I also think if you're there, we're gonna need an encore performance of the dance. Oh my gosh, the dance. <laughs> the dance. Do you still remember and it? Do you know it by heart still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to <laughs> look at it back just a couple more times, but yeah, it's. It's there. It's there. Yeah, who, originally. Who choreographed that dance? I know we're supposed to be talking about Rama drama, but who choreographed that dance? No, it's a good question. So my sister-in-law is a dance choreographer for in uh, Montreal. <clears throat> and she, uh, originally, we had her come up with a choreography for it. 
And we, the, the difficulty with the dance was first we had to find the music. And originally we were thinking we were going to do this play on like a Backstreet Boys or NSYNC mm. kind of style yeah. uh, Christmas song, but we couldn't get the rights to anything. It was, everything was like yeah. so expensive and yeah. we could just couldn't use, you couldn't use, you couldn't use anything that's kind of, you know, relatively the same. Right. And so we went on this, like uh, this, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like a, like a, um, a, there's songs that are nondescript songs yeah. that, you know, that you can per like a song. Um, what do you call, what do you, what do you call those sites? Like so, songs that you can get rights to. Yeah. And, and, and so we, we, we heard this, this uh, kind of dubstep kind of sounding Skrillex sounding song like remember when Skrillex the DJ was like really hot and it was like okay yeah 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 10 yeah. 12 years ago mm -hmm. so we were thinking it might have been a song I don't know like when we were younger that we might have listened to for fun or whatever and and so it, it it made sense as the song but we were this was like five six days maybe six days before we were going to do the dance and so we still had to get the rights to this song or just to make sure that it was approved by Hallmark right and I sent the song to my sister-in-law. My sister-in-law put together a choreography. Um, Your wife's you know, sister? My wife's sister. Okay. Cassandra's sister, Shanna. And, uh, and we got the choreography back and we're like, it's so good. It's like, it's so good, but it needs to be a little bit more, you know, a little bit more lowbrow and a little bit more like less refined. And so we kind of just chopped it up a bit and we, we worked on it at our every single lunch hour. And the tree thing came, you know, when, when Tyler pops up and then, and then I pop yes. in the top, it came in like the, it came like the day before we, we, we did the, we had, we had to go to camera with this dance. We, we, we were like, that's what we should, that's how we should finish it with the tree. And then originally my branches were way out and Tyler's were out like this, were, were out like this. I went out like this. And then Paul was behind me and Paul's like, why don't you bring your arms in a little bit, Andrew, um, to make it more like a tree style. I'm like, yes. So then we, we just kept on working on that and working on that. Um, and Tyler had listened to, had, had watched a whole bunch of choreographies as well. He had watched a bunch of like cheesy choreographies and, uh, and I don't know what how he what he looked up specifically, but he came up with like the the push down and the roll up when I rolled Tyler up like this, the fish <laughs> the, the fish hook and stuff like that. And we all threw in like a little bit of our own, a little bit of our own, and used a bit of my sister in law. So it was just a whole like you know uh, conglomeration conglomeration of yeah. a bunch of different dances that we put together. Oh, that's so awesome. I think the tree part was like one of my favorite parts. Oh, of that yeah. Day. And so just knowing now that it was like such a last minute thing. I know it's, it's funny eh? how the, and sometimes you shoot these movies and like there's moments in the movie where that you didn't even think were going to be a, 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 a memorable moment or like a, like a commercial moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where people, that's that, that's that part made the commercial or it made, yeah. the, you know, and, and then people are intrigued, like, wow, what is that? You know? And, you know, the elf costumes, obviously we, we, uh, we teased with the, with that, uh, you know, the little Instagram post that we had put up, up there and stuff. But right. so people knew that we we're going to be dressed like el elves, but yeah, no. So it, it came together and surprisingly pr pretty well, you know? Yes. If they do a repeat, if they do an encore pre uh, presentation of that dance, I want your phone out immediately. <laughs> you know, like, somebody needs to organize a flash mob of this. Oh. Drama. I don't want to be in charge of organizing it, but I think someone should. It's <laughs> a pretty good idea, Jess. <laughs> yes. Um, but sadly, I do have to go now. Um, so I'm so glad I got to talk to you, especially if you're not going to be there. Yeah. Um, you if, too, Jess. If you're at home, please be my stand in, okay? You can be my stand in, Jess. Yes. Paul, Tyler, yeah, you heard it from the man himself here. Her size, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a little shorter than just a little shorter. A little shorter. Hair's a little longer. You know? <laughs> I mean, we can talk it into the Santa hat. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yes. 
but yes yeah casey and i will be at rom and drama if you're listening and you also are not able to be there make sure to check out our instagram we'll be doing live coverage so that you feel like you're part of the experience even if you're at home all right love you jess bye, bye jess guys. bye all right mister yeah three men and a baby <laughs> 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 it's premiered so all the secrets are out <laughs> they are all out oh man i don't think that i have laughed so hard in a very very long time so here's here's my first question what element did doing this movie what element did you feel it fulfilled that maybe some of your other films had been missing in the past? Um, <clears throat> what element? Uh, I think, you know, there's, it, there's, a, there's a few. Uh, one, being able to work with Paul and Tyler, having more of a male-centric movie, you yeah. know, we've never, we've, we don't really get that opportunity on Hallmark and Hallmark taking a leap of faith on us doing this movie was a big thing for them. And I don't think, you know, three years ago, they would have been able, they would have done that. Uh, so definitely working with Tyler and Paul and having it be more of a male centric movie, um, which I think, you know, seeing how the movie, what the reaction was and, and, and the numbers, I think that it's really been awesome that it's it's potentially going to open up doors now for more males on Hallmark to be able to do more movies together, you know, and <clears throat> so we'll see, we'll see what happens, you know, but definitely that I think, you know, for me in the trio, I, Paul and Kimberly, it was a very difficult I guess my character was difficult for them to write. They didn't know oh. where I kind of fit in, in the brothers, you know, wow. who I was, my identity as a brother. Um, and when I read the script too, I was thinking like, I don't, you know, I, I, I need to figure out who I am as well. Who am I in this family? Who am I? What, what type of brother am I? Because Paul's very specific. He's got social anxiety, right? Doesn't want to be around people. He's the pet therapist, but he's like, everything he can play that thing which is the which is the you know the social anxiety right Tyler is you know he's he's not a likable person he's you know he is a video game pro programmer guy who doesn't really want to be around people either um he's a bit of a moocher <laughs> he's a bit of a moocher yeah he's just like yeah and he's kind of got this like whatever thing in life you know yeah. he's just like like I, he doesn't really like, uh, you know, just a, an underachiever that just kind of everything comes easy to him. And, you know, th those people that you hate that are like, read, you know, read a book, be able to, you know, retain every, all the information, but just right. don't, don't try, don't really, you know, it was like my friends that never used to study for, you know, for, for tests, they, they studied a tiny bit. And then they would know all the, have all the answers where I would have to be like buckling down and I have to read and read and read and read and read um, just to get like a C plus. But I, um, but, and then my character, like, where do I fit in? Like, and so I think no, f like figuring out and not having any kind of ego in it being like, oh, I want to be the funny brother. I want to be the, you know, I want to try just fitting in as, as part of this, like this team, this, this, uh, and this very, this chemistry, this chemistry of these brothers, like it's very important that each guy has their own space to do what they do. Right. And so for me, I think that's a, that was an element as an, an actor, Andrew going into it, going like, okay, who am I? What am I, what's my purpose here? And it was really to be the rock, you know, it was really to be the guy that like, I'm, I'm, I got this. I got yeah. it. I got it all. Like, I don't have to worry about like, nothing affects me. Nothing affects me. Um, and so to, to, to come into a comedy and to not be the, not be the, f the funny guy, you yeah. know, where I think younger Andrew would have been, would have been like, okay, I, I want to try to find ways that I can be super funny, but 
I think like, as I'm, yeah, as I get older and understand my purpose in projects and how to tell the story in these movies, I think that it's, it, um, this was a, this was a really great, um, testament to that, you know, where it was a, it was like a, a test for me to go like, okay, Andrew, like you, you, this is a time for you to fit in where you're not in a comedy where you're not going to be the funny guy. You're going to be the, the, the guy that basically is like, just helping move this, tell the story. And, you know, so, um, so I think that was another big, big part. And, uh, um, it's another element. I mean, I think I those, mean, those were... are, those are great. Those are great answers. <laughs> I, I loved the fact that it was more male centered because it, it just gives a whole different perspective on a Hallmark movie. Yeah. And the love story, you know, Paul said this at the beginning, he's like, you know, the, the main love story in this movie is the love story of the brothers. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I probably wouldn't have said that at the very beginning. I probably would have been like, oh, the love story is, you know, Tyler and, and his uh, and, 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 um, Fiona. You know, and his and Fiona, you know, and so, you know, Taylor and Fiona story, but uh, it's the brothers. You know, it's the love story is the brothers. And that's a beautiful thing when you think of it. You know, how many, how many siblings out there do, how many siblings don't, don't get to talk about the things that have potentially put a wedge in their relationship or, you know, or, or family dynamic. And because they just, it was too tough to talk about, or they just, you know, that happens a lot, I think in families. So for us to have this baby thrown into our lives and use the baby as the catalyst to break open the emotions and the conversations that we've always been wanting to have was a really special thing. (laughs) So what you said about Kimberly and Paul having trouble writing your character, that actually makes a lot of sense because when I was watching, I was having trouble figuring out if you were the oldest or if you were the middle child and Paul was the oldest, but because Stefan ran and hid, that Luke stepped up to the oldest brother uh, role, if you will. Yeah, and no, it's so a good that point. was yeah, that was something I was like, wait, what age order are they? <laughs> and then yeah. it got confirmed when I heard another interview. I'm like, okay, Paul says he's the middle child. Got it. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that makes that makes a whole lot of sense. All right, I am dying of curiosity. Did the idea for the three of you to work together, did that come first? Or did the whole script come first and then the and idea then of us work the idea of us working all together came first. Uh-huh. And there had been a there had been a talk of a three three men and a baby concept at Hallmark. Um uh-huh. You know, for a while now, actually, funny enough, like I brought it up a long time ago, about five years ago, I brought it up to Michelle as Michelle Vickery at the time. And I was like, hey, be fun. You know, Paul Green, myself, and Daniel Lissing do a movie together, maybe like a three, three men and a baby thing or something like that. And, um, you know, kind of put on the back burner or whatever. And it just right. wasn't a time for them to do that. But I am so glad, you know, that this opportunity came up with Paul, Paul and Kimberly being the writers too. Cause yeah, Kimberly and Paul are single-handedly helping change the face of Hallmark, you know, like with unexpected Christmas last year, like that was a Christmas uh-huh. movie that not a lot of people have seen on Hallmark, you know, uh-huh. and, 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 and then three wise men this year. And, you know, and I think like they now, they have they have an opportunity to to bring a lot of you know um a lot of change and and storytelling that hallmark fans have never seen before on the on this yeah. network so so they were so they so 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 around around like two years ago now um it was i think it was jen kramer or samantha de peppo over at uh over at hallmark that the two executives over at hallmark mm-hmm. that uh that had said hey paul kimberly we want to get a movie with Paul, you and and Tyler together. Um, you know, we have this idea: three three men and a baby. Uh, go, and so Paul and Kimberly 
buckled down, did what they did, do what, did what they do, and came up with this. Their first draft of this script was incredible, you know. Yeah. And and this, I mean, the second draft, they didn't, they didn't really have many network notes to be honest like they didn't there wasn't a lot of rewrites and network notes from what i understand that's great um they really knocked it out of the park you know with this with their first draft and so um so yeah when when it when we read this when we read the script Paul, tyler and i called each other you know tyler missed a flight when he read this script i heard that yeah. i heard that he was so engrossed and he was so engrossed in reading the script that he missed a flight he said yeah. that's a story for another time i'm like wait a minute no i want to hear that story yeah yeah and and tyler gets tyler gets his uh he gets his feedback on scripts from his mom his mom's one of the first people to read the scripts oh man and betty uh she had rave reviews of this script she's like oh my gosh tyler this is unbelievable you know this is going to be your best movie yet you know this is so yeah oh that's fantastic i i am so glad that everything worked out the way that it did and i mean the two of you being cousins by marriage that had to have helped with the brother chemistry because you spend so much time together well you you think you know you'd hope but you know i'm i don't have to like the guy if he's my cousin you know what i mean but it just so happens that I like, you know, 19 years of knowing him, we, you know, there's certain friends that you have that you just don't know what it is, but they're yeah. like, I, I'd be friends with Tyler if he wasn't my, my family, you know, right. and, and, yep. and he just, there's something in him that excites me. And I think the th same thing for him and we just rag on each other and, uh -huh. And it's easy, he's easy to be around. And, and then Paul, I, I, I hadn't met Paul up until about two years ago. I, really? You know, randomly. Yeah. Cause we know, we, we knew each other in the world, in the Hallmark world. And, sure, but you know, I would leave Winnipeg for a movie shooting with a director there. And then Paul would be flying in to work with that same director for not for his movie. And so I knew Paul Campbell's name and I watched his movies and I thought he was a great actor. Um, and then Tyler got his, you know, got to work in his movie, Unexpected Christmas. And I was like, oh man, this guy's also an incredible writer with his partner, Kimberly. And I worked with Kimberly on Bride for Christmas, like 10 years yes. ago. Yes, yes. So and this was her foray into uh, Hallmark movies. She, okay. she had never done Hallmark movies. Um, and so, <clears throat> you know, I knew her and I knew of her and I, you know, we had, we, we crossed paths a lot on set but hadn't seen her in a long time. And so, um, yeah, I mean, Tyler, the, the, the dynamic between him, Paul and I, it's just funny enough. Like we're just, it was classic. That's what it was. Yeah, We just, it's... we like each other so much. Like we, we realized that on set, we're like, man, we like each other. So much. we, we like, this is incredible. We're, we can like move in together. <clears throat> Uh, your spouses might have something to say about that. They might have something to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a fun little tidbit, and you probably don't even realize it, but in your tiny little intro, you made the dad joke about we deliver a movie to you, and you had two sign seal delivered actors in the movie there and so all the postables put those things together instead of delivering a baby so oh that's great you weren't, you weren't in any scenes with them they uh it was jeff gustafson who played tyler's boss yes and then course, chris, yeah. and then chris who played kevin uh Ty, uh taylor's co-worker so yeah the one who I said nobody likes chris. you <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. I love Jeff. Jeff is amazing, isn't he? He is so fantastic. He's when we so had him funny. here on the pod, we we could not keep our breath. We, I know. He was cracking a joke a second. We were all, the three of us were just dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The guy is so sharp. He's so witty. He He's great actor, great, great acting teacher. Mm -hmm. His we have a family member, we have a family friend that, uh, that lives in Vancouver, um, that she, Jeff was her teacher <clears throat> at the school, the acting school that she goes to. Wow. And, uh, 
I, I, I got her out one day to, to work background on, on, uh, on three wise men. Yeah. Every time I'm in town, I try to get her a little gig in, in any Aww. movie that I'm in, like a background performer role. She's, she's just an aspiring actress. She went to, you know, went, went to acting school and stuff. Oh, that's and, sweet. uh, she shows up to set that day and she's like, Mr. Gust- Gustafson, Mr. Gustafson, you're here. And then Jeff is like, what are you doing here? I'm like, what are you doing here, Ella? And she, she, she says, well, I, I know Andrew, I know Andrew and Andrew gets me in these movies. So it was great that Jeff, Jeff was surprised by one of his students. Oh, that is so great. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. We were, we were excited when we heard that Jeff was going to be in it and then that he was playing the boss because he's usually not. And so, man, you were a boss at playing the boss. Nice yeah, right? job. You know? <laughs> so that was really great. Yeah. Okay. I heard something in a previous interview the babies could only be on set for 15 minutes at a time. Yes. I did not know that. And I've been, I was a background actor with a baby in it for a scene and it felt longer. Maybe that was just me. I don't know. But 15 minutes, that was it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Don't you want a baby schedule? Don't we all want to work a baby schedule? Yeah, well, how would yeah. anything get done? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and there's just, you know, we fortunately we had twins, you know. Yeah, so you we had, had the twin girls. Katie Thank and Callie. Heavens. Yeah, and and was great. One was teething and one wasn't teething. One was, you know, a little bit in a, in a better situation. She was less pain. Um, and so you when we wanted the crying one, we'd bring the one that's teething on set. And we... Right wanted the one that was you know that would be a little bit more uh you know inquisitive and calm and just look, look around and just like yeah. you know do what we you know just a little more calm we'd have the other one so and what were their names again katie and callie katie and callie did they have uh did they have any trouble with any kind of separation anxiety i know that her that their mother was right there but when they got passed over to you was there did you have any trouble with that we we didn't we didn't have any experience i i hadn't had any experience working with a baby on set you know i've always obviously had experience with babies right two of my own. own but um what we realized on day two pretty quickly we were like you know the mom would come in and she would hand the baby over and then if the baby had some sort of separation anxiety or she'd look at like, look at who, who's, who's holding me now. Uh-huh. Um, she'd come in and she'd try to like, she'd take the baby back. She'd try to calm the baby down a little bit, then give her back. And then day two, it was a scene where I was coming into my house, my, my, my newly refinished house, meeting my contractor. And then he's like, Oh, is that the, that's a little baby? Imagine having, Oh, is that your baby? And I'm like, no, no, it's not my baby. It's not my baby. And he's like, well, imagine having this house filled with kids and the tree over there and the fireplace. Yeah. And remember that scene? Yeah, I do. Anyways, we had like 30 minutes left in the day to shoot that scene on with the baby in my arms. So we, uh-huh. we, we have the baby for 15 minutes, basically. Right. Clock is ticking and we got to get this shot. And she was not having it because she was still getting to know me. Right. And I had to give her to the to the guy, to the contractor as well. So we that was written out. So we decided, okay, we can't pass her from me to you at this point. She's just, it's just too much for her to handle at this point. I decided to bring her outside <clears throat> and I told the mom, I was like, Hey, why don't I take her for a bit and just like walk, walk around with her and just kind of do what I did with my kids, you know? And so I brought her outside and I took a leaf off of, off a plant and I kind of like played with the leaf and I gave it to her and she was like, she was finally like calming down and looked at the leaf and would touch the leaf. And then when she was breathing and I was breathing with her and I was just like trying to calm her down, talk to her. And then after that day, we realized we're like, if Katie or Callie is crying, I think what we should do is we should just try to tough it out, connect with them, have mom, you know, just not come in and inter- interfere. Cause the more that mom keeps coming in or mom's in, I, I, line and my kids do that my my two and a half year old still does this if yeah look you know, for mom beginning and dad. of the school year yeah beginning of the school year i i left him <clears throat> heard him crying 
And I'm like, I know that if I go back, it's just going to make things worse, you know? So I'm just, I'm just going to leave. I'll check in, I'll text and see like, how is he now? Yeah. But every, everyone's kids, you know, they're once the mom and dad had, have gone and out of eyesight, they usually just will calm down you yeah. know? And, and, and yeah. So they adapt quickly. <laughs> Well, and that was really good of you because in order for you to get any work done, you you did the right thing because when a baby is constantly being passed around, they don't get to know anybody. And so the fact that yeah. you took that time to connect with them, I think, yeah, I think that's wonderful. By the end of our first week, Paul, Tyler, and I, basically we could, each one of us could hold the baby. Immediately when the baby saw that she was being handed off to one of any three of us uh -huh. and also margo <clears throat> margaret collins yeah um margaret collins she she was amazing with the baby i mean she was oh. you know just like uh, is like grandmother style you know she's yeah. just like a um such maternal instincts but um so the baby could be dropped off between any one of us and and felt like she was you know she was she was in good hands or she was she was in a safe place. Oh, that, oh, that's fantastic. That that's wonderful to hear. So I, I read in an article that you guys were calling Tyler, the baby whisperer, because apparently he had quite the knack. And the first thought that came to my head was that has got to be at least in part due to the time that he has spent with your family. Cause he spent a lot of time with your kids. Yes. Yeah. Tyler is like the, he's the, the, the forever uncle guy. Like yeah, he's like the, the fun guy, uncle. He's, so. he's the fun uncle that can, you know, admittedly, I, I, I'm not really a baby guy. Like I'm, I, I, I had to have kids to real, to realize to figure out their personalities of to like to realize what what they are like who, why they do what they do you know I, was, I had to spend a lot of time with them to go oh i appreciate them for all of their um you know uh the instability of like how they could cry on a dime and why they cry i, right. I had to know it's like it's like working with, with a horse you know what i mean it's like you don't you don't know them until you work with them until you understand them at least right. for me i'm the type of person that i need to i need to understand something and then i'm but tyler just like he's like th throws himself in and has so much patience and his brother you know i th i think it's just something in the heinz family but his brother and his sister-in-law they foster they're like oh. they're they're angels on planet earth they're walking angels like these this this family they have like four or five foster kids that come through and they and so tyler goes back home to ottawa to the farm and he's like spending time with essentially other people's kids all these children yeah all these all these, all these children that he's he, that he's you know taken on like his own and same with his brother and his sister-in-law and you know they're just like such incredible people and i don't think i don't know i mean i i know that i i could foster i know that i and once you have a child anyone's child just like an animal i think you you spend enough time with them you take them in as your own and and yeah. fostering is like you know you spend you you're i don't think you need to going back to my 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 uh my movie my christmas family tree yeah like, i don't think you need to be it doesn't need to be birthright. It doesn't need, you don't need to be born from the person in order to call them mom and dad. You know what I mean? Yeah. They are your mom and dad if they've done certain things for you and, and nurtured you in a way throughout your life. Um, and that's My what- My oldest no, brother no. is adopted. So I, exactly. I know that story. Yeah. And I'm sure as a parent, you know, it's, there's definitely like a, a learning curve or like a curve where for the parent and also for the child to earn that, trust and to create that bond and stuff but yeah you know tyler um is one of these guys that just he's he's so good with kids he's he's so much better than i am with kids like i he's just all he just has this knack he's oh. yeah interesting i need tools i need like i need 
to draw back on where Tyler's just like, he's like, man, like, what? give me the baby, give me the baby, whatever, give me the baby. I'll do, you know, and then he just does things and talks to the baby and plays with the baby and does things. Yeah. So. Well, he did a really good job of looking stressed, especially when he was doing the bouncing up and down. Oh gosh, I laughed so hard when, right? when Luke came home from the firehouse and he's doing the up, down, like, yep, been there, done that. Only a parent, <laughs> only a parent knows that. Only a parent knows this, that trick. I remember when my sister-in-law came out to visit me in Vancouver, uh, she <laughs> surprised her sister, Cassandra, yeah. Um, Cassandra came up here when, when West was two months, two months old. Yeah, he was okay. two months old. And I was shooting a um, movie, Dashing Through the Snow. Yes, and we were love up, that one. And we were up in Squamish, which is like halfway between Vancouver and uh, Whistler. Okay. And uh, Shanna shows up. And anyway, Shanna is like a workout gurus this girl is like fit like you wouldn't believe being a dancer and like then yeah, now she's sure. now she's translated that dancing background into fitness health and you know health and wellness and fitness and fitness training pilates and stuff like that uh-huh, uh-huh. and uh and so every every time we're with shanna she always finds different ways to like work out on anything she'll just be like she'll pick up an, a, a a dining room chair and she'll like do stuff with the chair like hold the chair in a certain way and do leg yeah. lifts and like do all these things so we would toss West around between the three of us. We would like do squats, put him out. We go in, out, squat, up and down, pass it to the next person. In, out, squat, up and down, pass it to the next person. In, out. And we kept him doing squats like this. We would do squats all the time with West in our hands. <laughs> so, and, and it, he was so calm. He loved it. He loved it. <laughs> Oh my word. Oh yeah. Um, when my oldest was a baby, uh, my husband would just take her like this, lay her flat on his hands, either uh tummy side down or backside down, and he just would do this up and down, up yeah. and down. And she totally calmed down. He said, Man, I don't have to lift any weights while this girl's growing up. You know? Yeah, I know, I know some parent strength you know that we you, you don't realize how strong you are until you you hold a baby for a, its first year and a half you know yeah. or a year and do it things with so the baby and, yeah yeah and that was that was another thing you know I know that this was that this movie kind of took most of the perspective of a single mom or a single parent because uh, because the, because Margaret played was uh, a single mother, but I mean, I, I remember saying when we recapped it, I said, this is any wife whose husband goes off to work and she's at home with the baby, you know, <laughs> or that's it. Uh, yeah. And so I was just like, I, I went through that. I went through that. I went through that. <laughs> and it was something that was so relatable on so many levels. And that, that was what I absolutely loved about it. I just, I have to say one other thing. I don't think I have ever seen you, at least not in a Hallmark film. I don't think I've ever seen you so intense when you said, I do everything for everyone else. I never do anything for me. I literally backed up in my chair and went, Andrew Walker just shouted. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that, that was, I, that was something new. I'd never seen you play a character that literally got angry and shouted. Was, Whoa, that was intense. I love hearing that. I, that was actually, that was the take that, that was the one that I did kind of for Hallmark, I, which I did oh. two more that I, I was more overtly, upset and uh -huh. and and uh um so i think i would have said i think i would have even surprised you even more probably but I think maybe they <laughs> thought it was a little too intense potentially i don't know but i uh yeah you know and it was going back to kimberly is the one that wrote a lot of these those scenes that were like the real raw scenes like kim those were kimberly's words that i was saying I'll Okay. Okay. You know, and, and, um, and also in the car, the, the scene in the car when we were uh -huh. all talking and, yep. you know, and talking about dad and dad not being there, we needed a father in our life. And, you know, um, 
those were those th those Kimberly wrote a lot of those lines and and she was like you know I I want to and, and I love that they that this movie the people responded to this movie in this way because you know I think <clears throat> sometimes what some of these movies and I'm not just saying Hallmark but I'm saying in Christmas movies in general right yeah what they're missing is that authentic um, life experience stuff that people go through that the like uh, this is these are real life stories you know these yeah. are real real stories these are things that people actually go through and like we should be portraying the contrast there should be like funny moments make them so funny the serious moments make them serious don't yeah. sugarcoat don't and there sugarcoat was such it. a great balance of that and i think that's what people responded to in this movie you know yeah. and they were like okay well yeah this is I, I understand where this person's coming from, you know, and, and, yep. and then you're, and then it's, and then you're kind of brought back with some humor, you know, which, which is great. Oh, Andrew, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule and with your filming another movie. Thank you so much for coming and talking of course, with Cammie. us. It of course, so no, anything fun. for you guys. Thank you so much. Can't wait for our next duet. We'll have AK <laughs> Airlines pick us that. up. We'll have AK Airlines pick us up and uh fly us to our next gig but uh thank you so much and thanks everybody for listening to this podcast today i appreciate you all following my story always and my my ramblings of what i do here <laughs> one part bud <laughs> 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 all right, all of you, yes, thank you so much for coming on and for listening. I hope that you had as much fun as we did because I'm dying over here. <laughs> and we will see you next time on Deliver Me a Podcast. Bye, everybody. Merry Christmas, everybody.